Okay, so this week we've been having some issues with the sheep getting out. And uh, let me show you what I've done to try to help the situation. I placed some of these along here and added uh, two additional lines of barbed wire to try to keep them from coming through. Now, I noticed that the fence was not very hot. So I ended up, I got this, which is an, an inductive, uh, so it will sense the uh, electrical force field. And so I know that there's getting connection. So what I've narrowed it down to is that it is a grounding issue. So I'm gonna go get some wire. And uh, yeah, this was where they were coming through quite a bit. So pretty much I wanna zap them pretty good so that then they respect this, this fence because uh, we've had issues with them getting out. And once I get this working for this paddock, then I'll expand on and make sure that that is working great. So I'll uh, bring you along. So currently I only have one grounding rod on the other side of the barn. And so I have some of this wire that you typically put underneath the ground uh, in order to extend the connection past a gate. So I'll be uh, doubling up the grounding rods. And uh, I think you want them probably about three to four feet apart so that they get a really good ground. And it's really wet out today, so we should get a pretty good grounding once I get the second one in there. Currently, here is the grounding rod, and I feel like it's not getting that great of a connection because when I wiggle it around, there's some uh, spark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a new grounding rod that way, and then I'll connect the two. So uh, let's see if this helps. So I have a six foot grounding rod. This one is copper. The other one is uh, galvanized. And then I got this really nice ground rod clamp, uh, which I think will make a great connection. So I'm gonna get the ground rod in place. And I was checking this barn door to make sure that it would not interfere. So I may put the ground over here and then run that, that black wire over that way. Putting in this grounding rod on a wet day with this post hole, I mean, post driver makes easy work. Once I got the grounding rod down so far, I ended up using the closed end and I'll get this down further and then I'll be able to hook up the wire. Okay, so this is the ground rod connector. I'm going to orient it this way. What's nice is like, one part of it can come off. And then I'll just be using this uh, Phillips screwdriver to tighten it down. So I have this snug down. Now I'm gonna try to figure out how I'm gonna route the wire to the daisy chain, the other ground. One is use the wire strippers to remove probably about a quarter inch of this insulation and then I'll place it down in there. So the ground wire has been attached and I make sure that it's very snug. Now I'm going to bend this wire so that it kind of hugs the edge of the barn. And then that will give me an idea of where I need to cut it down there. So I'm gonna see whether or not just doubling up down there will make a good enough connection. If not, what I'll do is I'll notch out some of the insulation here and then have that one bite onto that with a uh, crimp uh, connector. I'm gonna see if that connection is just enough to make an improvement on the fence. If it's not, then I'll go ahead and notch out this insulation and crimp it on there. Okay, I have this fence tester. And ideally, I'm targeting for 5,000 to 6,000 volts. So what you do is you put it on a hotline and then little rod you put down on the ground. Okay, it looks like it is not hitting. So I'll go ahead and make the crimp on the ground. It looks like the old one is pretty corroded. So I cut it off 
Okay, I feel like an idiot. I was putting the wire on the wrong side. If I put the wire here, and if I put this wire there, it will then sandwich it properly. As I'm going ahead with all of this work, I'm, I'm not wanting to rely on that to send the signal. So what I'm gonna do is crimp this on here and then I'll cut this shorter and then it will be able to be attached there. And then this will go down there. Okay, I got this connected now over to that grounding rod. Now I just need to adjust this and get this fastened down there. I'm happy with that. Now this wire is the hot that goes to another part of the fence that I disabled uh, so the kids don't get shocked because it's near the playground. So now I'm gonna plug the energizer back in and see how the fence is doing. Okay, let's see what this is. why that's not working so the uh, light is supposed to be on flashing when it's good so I'm gonna try to see if swapping out the energizer will make a difference I'm gonna see if this energizer helps um, now this is a low impedance output 120 mile range but it has 6.7 joule output and 10 stored uh, that's that's gonna zap you pretty good it even is supposed to be good for large exotics like elk, goats, sheep, bulls, cattle, horses, pigs, and predators. So let's give this a try. It has a device on here that can help protect against lightning strikes. So um, let me get these. Yeah, there's a washer on there. Okay, so you have one set of washers on there, and then you uh, put this on there, like so, and then you'll sandwich the wire in between there and here. And what it does is pretty much just fries the storm guard without frying that. So let's get this hooked up. Yeah, I have it hooked up, the fence and the ground wire goes there. I'm gonna plug it in and see if it works. Okay, it looks like it's working. It's hard to tell, but that light is jumping. Now let's go out and see if we're getting voltage on the fence. So it looks like we're only hitting 2000 volts, which it's not that much. Let me see on this line. Okay, let me disconnect the other part of the fence to just see if trying to do too much right now it looks like an older setup that I had this fence is getting conducted so I got to because it's not just that I identified the issue. This rubber tubing is not a good enough insulation there and it was grounding it out. Now when I come over here, now we're hitting 7,000. So I'm pretty happy with that 7,000 volt hitting that. Uh, 
that should really keep the sheep in. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm glad that I was able to get down to the bottom of the issue. So on another day, I'll need to replace that little hose with a proper insulator in order to um, electrify or energize that section of the paddock. So um, just a disclaimer. So um, I'm not a fencing expert, um, but from what I've understood, there's a solid state energizer, um, which in dry climates could potentially uh, cause a fire. Um, and then there's low impedance, which low impedance allows you to hook on a uh, poly, poly wire. Um, so it's more or less a pulse and it does better if you have a lot of vegetation. Um, a solid state needs to have pretty much no vegetation interfering with its connection. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and until next time, have a great day.